This week on Bygender.net, sex, romance, and guilty pleasures. Sam wants to know how being bigender affects our sexual and romantic orientation, and what's a guilty pleasure song? I'm going to tackle the second one first. Behold what is almost certainly the only Zune in Mississippi bearing a trans equality sticker. This Zune contains it all. It's got cheesy Mexican pop music, Erebede. It has Korean dance music, Hyori Lee. It has bad 80s pop. It's got it all. I'm a lover of cheesy, poof, guilty pleasure music. It gets me through the day. I don't know if I can pick just one, but one that stays with me through my entire life is Don't Go Breaking My Heart by Elton John and Kiki D. Don't go breaking my heart. I really have no shame. There you go, Sam. I know. It's not from the White Album. Now, sexual orientation is a fascinating subject for me, as is romantic orientation. Now, uh, by the time this video goes up, Bryn will probably have already talked about the Bygender.net official patented distinction between sexual and romantic orientation. You can be asexual and still want a good cuddle. It's possible to be romantically attracted to someone without necessarily uh, being physically aroused by them and sexually attracted. It's uh, part of the deal. There's nothing wrong with asexuality. And, uh, and in fact, I experience long periods of relative asexuality through my uh, hormone treatments uh, because with my dosage fiddling, I sometimes dial my sexual attractions up and down. But some people are just plain old-fashioned asexual. It's just the way they're wired. So, there you go. I'm going to stick with kind of a general umbrella. What do I like and how do I think my gender ties into it? Well, in a nutshell... I am bi, stacked upon bi. I do not discriminate based on gender alone when determining whether or not to reciprocate affection from another. Meaning, your genitals aren't really my biggest concern. Are we compatible? Are we into each other? Um, do you and I find each other hot? You know, These are some of the things that are going to be more relevant factors when I'm interacting with someone. But as far as the bi-gender part goes, when I think about being physically intimate with someone, or even just, say, going out for dinner, it kind of becomes relevant because sometimes I want to be handled in a manner consistent with how one might handle a, uh, a female within certain cultural norms that matter to me, you know? Um, but sometimes it's the other way around. I mean, I want to open the door and I want to pull out the chair, but sometimes I also want to be the one who has the door open, who has the chair pulled out. I want to be in different roles, I want to be treated differently, and I feel like in a long-term relationship with me, someone is going to have to be able to interact with me in a manner that is more open-ended, you know, be able to treat me really nice and allow me to treat you really nice. So, it's it's not just who am I into. Ah, uh, no, Tux. Tux always likes to pop into these things. Uh, 
Mm. It's not really just, you know, do I like boys, do I like girls, but who is it that's doing the liking, you know? I think it would be really uh, very cool to be involved, if only for a while, with someone else who is by gender, so that we could really experiment with and explore the various interactions of masculine and feminine. I think that would be awesome. So that's how it breaks down for me. What about you?